Don Walsworth is the chief executive officer of Walsworth Publishing Company, which was founded by Don's father and uncles in 1937 to print playbills. Today, the company employs more than 1,850 people worldwide and is among the 50 largest printing companies in the United States, providing commercial printing services for yearbooks and other specialty publications. Don is a Mizzou graduate and has previously served on the University of Missouri System Board of Curators. He currently serves on our college's strategic development board. Don, in 1937, your father and uncles founded Walsworth Publishing to print playbills. How did the business evolve to become one of the 50 largest commercial printing companies today? Well, we've been quite uh, fortunate, uh, Joan. Uh, my, uh, actually, my dad and mother started the company. Uh, my mother was a, uh, they would go in and they put a hometown shows on for churches and, and schools and such. And then my mother would direct the, the play and uh, then my dad would sell advertising on the school on the bills for the for the play, and that's how the the company uh, evolved. And from there, we went into uh, more of an advertising type situation where they would do cookbooks and uh, war memor Second World War uh, memory books and such, and uh, and that led into yearbooks. And the yearbook was a uh, was really we were the uh, first company that started high school uh, yearbooks. And uh, that evolved by, uh, they would go to the school and they would uh, give the school the yearbooks and then sell ads in that town and the surrounding towns. And uh, that's how the yearbook uh, began in this country. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting business model. I didn't realize that that was how it started. It was. and. Uh, uh, then uh, it became uh, evident that you couldn't control your costs uh, just on advertising. You were speculating, and uh, at that time, they decided then to go in and just sell the, the yearbooks to the to the schools. And uh, it was a very uh, it wasn't uh, near the sophistication that we have today, as you might uh, might might think. Uh, but uh, it served a purpose at the time, and. Uh, Fortunately, uh, they were quite successful. You've been along on the journey with the company for quite a while now, 50 years since you graduated from Mizzou, in fact. How do you stay engaged? What keeps you going and motivated? What keeps the fire going? Well, it's, you know, we, we are, we're a very diverse company to begin with. We're not just a yearbook company. That's a stigma that we've had for a few years uh, in, in the past. Uh, what we because we have a, a large workforce and it's very seasonable, we decided it was imperative for us to get into the commercial printing to utilize our workforce and also our equipment. And uh, so Walsworth now is not just a yearbook printer. We're a very diverse uh, uh, major book printer and that's what we like to be called. We do about 7,000 schools but uh, uh, as far as uh, a commercial printing is concerned, we're a major player in that field. As you look to the future, since you've seen the company evolve so significantly over time, what advice do you have? What sort of lessons are you thinking in the back of your mind you're going to share as things move to the next level? Well, I think what we've always, we've always done, we've always tried to stay uh, ahead of the uh, technology uh, field. Uh, as you will see later on today as you tour our, our facilities, uh, we have uh, probably, the not probably, we do have the most modern equipment that you can buy uh, in the printing industry. And uh, just in the last three years we spent over 30 million dollars in technology alone. And uh, consequently what I would, uh, what I think what I would tell the uh, uh, next generation, which I'm not ready to do that yet, of course. <laughs> In the future, when the time <laughs> yeah, comes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but what I would, what I would uh, uh, tell them or uh, imply to them that they should, you have to stay ahead of technology. That's, that's the whole thing. You don't want to be surprised by a new product or a new uh, technique on the market. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've always done. We've, we've experimented with every kind of yearbook known to man. and. Still, the, it's the printed copy that's important to these, these young people. 
It's something that they can sign, they can go back and refer to it years from now. And we've made, a, we've made the book uh, uh, very sophisticated now. Uh, we have apps on our, on, with smartphones and you can bring a yearbook to life. We can, uh, we can take one picture in the book or as many pictures as the school wants to purchase and we can bring that picture to life. We can show the queen and then we can show with a smartphone or an app. We can show her being uh, her, her coronation. We can show a football player catching a pass out of the yearbook. So what we're doing, the yearbook is, is viable and it's, it is up to us to keep it that way. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you all figured that out because to someone who's not an expert in the printing industry in general and especially in the yearbook industry, you would think it would be one of the most potentially vulnerable industries to technology and to this kind of innovation. And yet you all have really threaded that needle between retaining the core uh, piece that people want from their yearbook and being very clever and innovative. How did you figure that out? What was your methodology for that? That's a very good question. Uh, years ago, uh, we were not struggling, but we were, we were, there were 17 yearbook companies in the, in the business at that time. And, a, and really about the same amount of schools, some larger, some smaller now, mm -hmm. of course. But what we, decide, what we uh, discovered, actually, is the more pictures you had in a book, it seemed to be more important to the students. And when our competitors back there were doing away with baby pictures and all this kind of uh, uh, things, uh, we didn't, we embraced that. And we wanted uh, schools to put the pay. Now they were very difficult to work with because as you can imagine, they were various sizes and et cetera. But we, we determined that it was very important to have as many pictures of a student in the book. That's what sold books really. And fortunately our competitors didn't really buy into that. They were more interested in uh, uh, modernize the book, if you will, or they were trying to uh, uh, make their manufacturing process somewhat easier. We, we didn't go that route. We, we, we went with more pictures, uh, more involvement with the students. Now to answer your question about various types of technology and we would be vulnerable, we, we really are in one sense. However, we've, we've tried video yearbook so, so many times and the, pro the problem with a video yearbook is this. You can give however many cameras you want to to the students in the school, but unfortunately, they're just gonna take pictures of their friends. If I'm not on the football team and I've got a camera, I'm not gonna take very many pictures of the football team. And that's, that's one of the, the problems that they have in that there's been so many people try that. Fortunately, right now, there's only four of us left in the yearbook industry, and I, I think because we're, we were able to attract and are able to attract the, the best and the brightest, if you will, uh, in the in printing industry, uh, we're the only uh, company that's growing in this industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every other company's sales is deteriorating somewhat. Congratulations on that success, <laughs> of course. Uh, one of the things that you've decided at the helm of this company that someone who's not an expert in the industry mm -hmm. or an expert in your leadership style might be surprised at is your commitment to staying in Marceline and to having a company that's now become one of the top 50 publishing companies in the country based in this um, really lovely community, but a community that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be the home. How has that worked for you? Talk to us about that strategy. Well, it works real, it re works real well, Joan. Uh, we're, uh, I'm very fortunate to have some unbelievable men and women. I, I really am. And in our company for the last uh, few years, we've been in a growth mode. You know, as you and your, your professors uh, in, in some of your classes, you know, a company is either in a survival mode, uh, in a sales mode to sell a company, or a growth mode. Not very many companies right now in this day and age are in a growth mode. And fortunately, because of the, the great men and women we have in our organization, we are in a growth mode. Uh, we're, we bought two companies in the last uh, 14 months and, and we, we plan to acquire several other companies in the very near future. 
And the reason we can do that is because we can attract people from the industry. As I said earlier, we're just not a yearbook company. We're a major, major commercial printer. And we specialize in niches. We're, uh, we do yearbooks, of course. We do many uh, medical textbooks. We're probably one of the largest medical textbooks printer in the United States. And uh, so we stay within, within what we do well. We're not very good map printers or doily printers or things like that. But as far as hardbound books, we're, we're really good. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can track people because we're not going to sell our company. You see, that's, that's uh, right now there's so much M&A going on throughout the country, as you're aware of, but we're not, we're not going to do that. I'm, I'm very fortunate that uh, my family will do quite well without our printing company. So we're, we're, I know it sounds a little hokey, but it, I mean this with all my sincerity, and my son means, feels the same way Don Jr. does, that we're really building this uh, for the communities we're in uh, and for our employees. I mean, we, and that's true, we really are. Mm -hmm. uh, we have benefit programs that, that's like no other company in the country has. Well, you've been very public, actually, in attributing the success of the company at the 75th anniversary. You talked mm. extensively about how it's the team and the employees that have really made the company what it is, in addition, of course, to your leadership and the family's leadership. So you talked about how um, the company is attractive to people in the industry and why someone would want to be here. How, what's the other side of that? How do you pick who you want on the team? How do you identify a good team? Well, we 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 identify people that, that fits into fits into the uh, management style that we use here. We're very entrepreneurial, and uh, we we don't uh, micromanage. Uh, we do expect results, of course, and uh, I think when we choose a, a person, uh, number one, we have a, a, a really a great succession plan here. Uh, we we plan for the future. We really do. And I think in this industry, you have to do that. It's, it's changing dramatically on a practically a monthly basis. It really is. And uh, we, we've, we've been able to attract uh, people. We, we're, we're located now in about five, six different uh, 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 places in the United States. And uh, so you just don't have to come to Marceline to be part of Walsworth. I mean, you can be in St. Joe, Michigan, you can be in Virginia Beach, Virginia, or you can be, you know, wherever. And uh, so it works well, and, and we have a, uh, a compensation program that uh, I think is outstanding. I don't think there's anything uh, like it in the, in the printing industry. I know there's not. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, because not everybody watching this would necessarily know this strategy in support of your employees, you have multi-generational families working for you, you have multiple employees who've been here for more than 30 years, and it's been a very consistent workforce as a result, despite the growth. Yeah, it really is. We have a, we have a seasoned workforce, and, and, and when we're acquiring a company, that's one of the most important uh, uh, aspects that we look at. We want to be sure that there's a seasoned workforce there. And, uh, and we want to go in and, and make them part of our family. And, and, and we really, we just don't talk that. Mm -hmm. we, we, re, we really back that up. We have a defined benefit plan. We have a 401k plan. We have a bonus plan. You know, it's, 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 a, whole, it's a whole mix of things. And, and our employees, uh, you know, they're just like family. I, I know it, it sounds, you know, little bit hokey but it's not they really are like family and and, and you know we we spent close to two million dollars on scholarships uh, for the for the students uh, we have continuous education uh, program here uh, we encourage our, our folks to, to go out and and to improve themselves and and they can they can grow with the company because we are in an acquisition mode uh, there's always going to be a position for a, for a good person. Mm -hmm. So some of those things you're able to do because in this unique way, in this way that's very advantageous in terms of attracting employees because you're privately held. So have you ever considered going public? Have you, are you planning to stick to that strategy? No, I, as I said, our family's doing quite well and uh, I just think we have an obligation to approximately 2,000 2, people 
and uh, you know we're just not going to let them down. Uh, like I said earlier, we're in an acquisition mood, and and we want to grow our company. Uh, I think that the 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 message that we've sent to to a lot of our our folks is that we've spent a lot of money on on uh, technology and uh, IT technology in particular, and I've always been a big proponent of. It's like building a house or a building. If you don't have a good foundation, chances are you're not going to do very well. So we've been very diligent as far as building the company foundation, as far as the IT and, and, and this kind of thing. And we built the foundation of this company for about a $500 million uh, company. And that's what we plan to be in not very long. So. Everybody knows where we're going. Uh, we're very transparent. Uh, we share practically all of our, our we, we share our joys and our sorrows, if you mm -hmm, will. Mm -hmm. But we, we're very transparent with our, with our, our folks. We really are, because they're part of the team. Right. Well, I'm glad there are more joys than sorrows. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that um, I have come to observe in getting to know you, and that I know our students hope to realize, is in your leadership and in your success, you're very disciplined. You're very disciplined in how you manage your life, your health, your schedule. What habits and activities do you attribute your personal and professional success to? Well, I think that I was I was very fortunate as a young person to to be involved with two uh, outstanding uh, men, uh, Edgerton Welch, uh, who was owner and, and president of Citizens Bank and Trust. Uh, I play a little basketball, you know, at Missouri and, and around here, and uh, he kind of followed me. And as soon as I graduated from college, uh, and we were not very financially stable at that time, incidentally, and my parents had just died when I was a sophomore, mm. but he asked me to be on the, his board at Citizens Bank, and he was going to teach me the banking industry, which Maybe he did and maybe he not. Some people might not agree <laughs> with that. I would consider that one of the joys and not yeah. one of the sorrows. <laughs> but I, he, 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 he was a mentor for me and he was just a wonderful person. Uh, and I'd say with his advice, and he was very uh, regimented. Uh, if something was going to happen at 3 o'clock, it, it happened at 3 o'clock. And, and I kind of, it kind of rubbed off on me. And then Stanley Ginn, who was a dear friend of mine, as you know, he probably he was in Columbia, Missouri, for many years, and he was he and Rosemary were dear friends of mine, and I got a lot of uh, uh, a very down to earth knowledge from from Stanley. But I'd say those two people gave me a lot mm -hmm. of uh, a lot of insight on on life and business, particularly, and being disciplined in order to march the path towards where you want to go. You better be that way. That's right. Well, you certainly are. It's it's a it's inspiring, actually, to see how you stick to what you say you're going to do. So, uh, not too long ago, you gave our commencement address I did. to our graduates, the True Last College of Business, including your grandson, Alex. You shared with us a story about when you were in college and you had a moment where you might have uh, chosen something different than what you chose behaviorally, but um, were given a second chance, given a, an opportunity, and you attribute that to, as a very important fork in the road moment for you in your own development. So much so that when you received a few years later, the university's highest alumni award, the Distinguished Alumni Award, you thanked the person who gave you that chance. How did that experience affect you as a mentor now that you're in the position to be that person for so many young people? Well, I think that's, I think that's uh, really important to be able to do that. Uh, uh, Dr. Matthews, Jack Matthews, was not the, uh, at that time he was not thought of as, as the kindest person on, uh, on campus by any means, and uh, generally you didn't get too many second chances, and it made a, it made a impression on my, my, my mind uh, at the time even, because he was, he was a very disciplined person. Uh, uh, Black Jack uh, Matthews, I think was his name, and, uh, but I was not a student for three days. And uh, after I met with him on the third time, he was gracious enough to let me come back at the University of Missouri. And uh, 
It was just a, it was a, a prank and the thing about it is I can't talk about it now because other students will be trying to do it probably <laughs> next week. Yeah, we want it all to be <laughs> yeah. good, positive but role he models. Did. But he did, <laughs> and I think it's important to give uh, people second chances. I've done that in many, I can think of many cases where uh, a person has, has done something or they've tried something and it really hasn't been a complete success. A second chance is generally warranted. One of the things I liked about that story and that I've observed you doing many times over the time that I've known you is not only are you very committed to your mentorship and the mentorship you provide, but you're always saying thank you. You're always very conscientious about that and by name, remembering who did what for you and making sure that others know. And I think that's a very admirable trait to pass on too. Well, thank you. You're but, welcome. <laughs> but I, I, I think it's very important. You know, it's, it's, it's too bad that uh, people don't acknowledge uh, uh, situations where a person's done something for someone. I probably, gosh, I probably write 10 thank you notes a week. I really do. And I do it to our customers too. And it's just not, it's just not to blow smoke at them. I mean, it's sincere and it's genuine. You know, I, I believe you have to thank your customers for their business. I, I really do. And I think you have to thank people for doing a good job. And that's one of the things that we have in all, all of our plants, and you'll see that today that uh, our people make the difference. We have signs every place, and it's just not for show. That, that's not the case, because you gotta back it up. And, and we really, truly mean that. We thank our people when they do a good job. We really do. And, uh, and we expect them to, to thank other people too. Uh, our supervisors and, and our lead people, that's the most important job they have, is communication with, their, with the people working for them. We as educators, uh, I think about the story you tell about Dr. Matthews and the impact that he had and our people, if we were to use that model, are primarily our students. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that they experience a situation, not so that they'll say thank you, but so that they're better off, that when they've passed through our hands that we've maximized them and given them every opportunity. And you've been very involved and active partner in a variety of aspects of what mm -hmm. we do on campus to help us make that happen. So you're in a unique position to observe us. What do you think we need to do as educators to maximize our ability to equip these students with what they need? Well, I think that, not I don't think, I, when I was on the Board of Curators, and President of the Board of Curators, I traveled to all four campuses often because I thought it was important that the students have a chance to communicate with the board and, and, and listen, and I, and I listened to them, what they had to say. And the most amazing thing that I, that I took away from all my visits on all these four campuses was I could tell the students were really happy. Uh, they had a smile on their face and they were proud of their professors. And, and, and you know, they, they're carrying that not only uh, outside the classroom, but to their other students, and, and I think that's important. But I think that a, a, the communication between professors and the students, other than just, I don't mean necessarily just the academic uh, 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 situation, but I mean there should be some type of a personal situation. And I see that in your college a lot, Joan. And I, and I admire you for that because I think that's, that's, that's really important. Uh, the students in, in Cornell Hall, uh, they walk around with a smile on their face and, and they know their professors and, and they call them by name and the professors call them. And, that, and that's, that's so important, it really is because you're involving the students really in, in the business school, and that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for yeah, no, observing really, that. It's yeah. really, it is part of what we try to accomplish. We do think it's what we should do, but we also think it's our distinction, much in the same way that you try to create the working environment right. for your employees. Right. It's really the same thing for us. But let's flip that a little bit and put the burden on our students and uh, make sure that they're taking some ownership of what they can do while they're in Cornell Hall or anywhere at the University of Missouri. What do you think a student should do with the opportunities we're giving them so that they're ready to face this challenging world? Well, I think the students, uh, I think the students should uh, take advantage of the situation that you're presenting to them. You know, I, I think that uh, uh, having a college degree doesn't make you the, the, the best uh, potential uh, person in the whole world. 
I think it's it's what college does to you. I mean, what it what it what it, how you benefit from college, not only the academic but the social, and then the and then the engaging with the other students. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, uh, you know, from many years ago, more friend, more years than I want to uh, admit to. Uh, we still have a relationship, right. and I think that's that's so important. We're, we're making a, a, a real important hire at Walsworth right now. And we have several of our people uh, have submitted names, resumes, of people that they had been in college with or in, a, in, 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 in the working environment with. And I think that that's, uh, I think that's really important. I really do. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope they take that advice and follow your mentorship model uh -huh. and leadership model. And I want to thank you not only for participating in this Centennial Project, which is so important to us and such a nice moment for us in the college, but for being such a great partner to us in the college and to the university as a whole. I know I speak for many of my colleagues who have been great beneficiaries of the fact that you are such a true tiger and so committed to what we do. So thank you for talking with us today and sharing your insights. We can't finish this without saying M-I-Z. Z-O-U. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. All right, thanks, Good. Don. Thank you. <laughs>